Hi, it's Patricia. Hi, members. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for joining. And thank you for being on the Ascension journey, as if we have a choice. Um, there are things that you do have a choice about. So I'm going to talk about some of these energies for November so that you are aware. Um, I'll start off with that right now. So first of all, it is intense. It already started before the moon. It's not necessarily all attributed to the moon, but it can seem that way. What it really is, is almost like a really big giant slingshot to sling you around to a previous year to try and address anything that may need addressing. Now that can be tricky because you may not really know what exactly that is. So I'm going to give you some things to do about that. And if you send me your email, um, I'm going to put it in an outline so that you can literally do it. Uh, writing it helps it from stop spinning around your head and getting onto paper. Now, first of all, it's going to be intense. The intensity is on several levels because it will be your physical body. It is your metaphysical side, which is your energy bodies, or as they are truly called, your complex of subtle bodies okay they all go together just like you could say in your chest you have a complex of organs that all need to interact and work together right so it's no different with your light body uh, it's not just so chakras um, there are connections that you share with each other like here so if you think about two people facing each other and hugging or kissing there's parts of you that link up don't worry if you're not there yet this is a process and it does take a little bit of time. We are rounding the corner on a lot of the disentangling that has been taking place really in earnest over the past whole year and a half. And you could literally say during the pandemic. That doesn't mean that you may not feel some intensity. So you could feel intense. You could feel headaches, localized headaches. In those headaches is going to be um, things like getting hit as a child, things like childhood uh, injuries, mild ones like bumping your head, falling off your bike, accidentally, you know, doing something klutzy like you open a cabinet and then you raise up and it's right there. Those kind of things. Your body still wants to repair them, meaning your light body will begin to work on the repairs to your physical body. It starts with the nerves. So deep in the nerves, they go deep into the bone structure. Um, that's where it can be felt. And so it can seem a bit abstract as to why you feel something when it's actually intended to do something else. That's when we trust and we have faith in the unseen because it will um, take place and your part in it is going to involve just acknowledging it, proper self-care. Now, what else? There's a lot of focus in and around the head. This is going to include sensitivities. It is going to include emotional sensitivities. It is going to include your reasoning. It is going to include your memory banks. And it is going to include things that are physical, such as allergies, food sensitivities, the kind of things that would give you a headache. Like if you know you're allergic to something, it gives you a headache. If you know that there's some irritant in the air, such as cigarette smoke, it, and it disturbs you, it is um, going to show up a bit amplified because your body literally wants to deflect that. Now, how do you do this? How do you do it? Well, what I'm going to recommend is um, through the week, if you're an American and you celebrate Thanksgiving, even if you're not, I recommend doing an intermittent fast. So what you might do with that is um, one solid meal a day. The other meals make them liquids like a smoothie, tea, juices, and also um, soups, uh, but real brothy soups, you know, nothing too solid in there. Stay light, okay? It helps you almost stay light on your feet so that you skim through because it is going to be a week of overindulgence. You can feel that from the collective. You will feel things like brain fog, stress, 
the more you detach the earthly things, the easier this will be for you. And that includes foods, foods prepared by other people. This is a real biggie for some people, no caffeine. So please refrain from caffeine uh, post full moon, if you can, for a week. If you can't, a minimum of three days. And if you need a substitute, um, please see one of my videos, which is I talk about some coffee replacements because a lot of people do enjoy coffee. Not right now. Please refrain from it because it's going to be one of those stressors that you can feel from the collective. And people that are already nervous, tense, driven, you know, they may be in you know, in an industry that is serving the public, such as the airline or travel industry. You don't want to feel them. They're quite literally running on caffeine and stress and anxiety and adrenaline and cortisol. So please don't give in to that refrain. It will help you quite a bit. It will help you rest. It will help you really get some of your energy back, almost like the ebb and flow of an ocean where you're quite literally taking things back from, you know, the collective, okay? <laughs> but when I say the collective, it really means worldwide, and it will be your country, you know, like whatever your country is going through. In the United States, we're going through a holiday. So, you know, there's that stress, whether people are working the holiday, avoiding the holiday, or making a big to-do about the holiday. It's there. It's a holiday. Okay, what else? Well, you can feel vulnerable. You can feel very stressed, okay, because your emotional side is all connected up here. It's in the things you see. It's in the things you feel. It's the things you feel for. It's the things that affect you. You can feel vulnerable and stressed all at the same time. It can feel very raw for you. It's a good time to take a step back and do an assessment of your goals. Because as we approach the end of the year, this is a natural ending point. And even though we're not quite at the end of the year, it's a good time to kind of, um, you know, do some of that fall prep, like, you know, cover your roses and, you know, protect the things you want to protect, throw away the old dead things. And it's a little bit like spring cleaning, but different because it can include a lot of old dead things. This is going to involve growth and discarding. So growth, growing in the direction that you need to go. There could be so many things. What it particularly will mean in this energy, though, is intellectual growth. And that is where it gets tricky because it may seem at odds with what you are experiencing. If what you are experiencing is um, mental scatter, like you forget or you feel overwhelmed and there's like 10 gazillion things to do and you just don't know which to do first, that's a part of this energy. If you are wondering how to navigate this, what you do is write it down, write a to-do list, and limit yourself to maybe two things for the day because there is also a time compression. What that means is it will feel like time is squeezed and there's only so much time to get things done. That's why it's so important to throw away and discard dead things. And I mean it. Throw it away. And I'm not just talking about photos from an old relationship. I mean, throw away the soulmate that you once may have believed they were anybody to you. Because they aren't. And they will be like a lead weight anchor on your foot if you try to hang on. If you hang on with hope. Now the hope is valid because hoping for love is actually, yes, a part of your heart and a part of your emotional spectrum. I'm not telling you don't have hope. Don't just hope for the wrong thing, the wrong person, the person who ghosted you, however it is put out there, false twin, ghost, whatever. I cannot emphasize that enough. If you've gotten zero attention, please leave. Leave them be. 
leave them dead on the floor knowing confidently that you have your proper energy back to you because that is what happens with those encounters. That's why it's so fleeting. You don't know what that person may have done to you in the past, but rest assured your soul is keeping them at bay for you properly. Now, what is the next thing? I'm going to talk about the great resignation. There's two sides to a resignation. One is to be resigned, which means that you're sort of tolerant, you're tolerating things. And the other one is to just call it quits. You are in a choice point right now. What are you calling quits on? And what are you just allowing it to simmer and accept that there are things in the works right now? So what this means is, can you have a level of acceptance that some things are in the works to improve for you and it'll take about a month? So if you're on that fence and you're trying to decide if you should quit a very nice gig, a lucrative job, uh, something with benefits, you know, if this pertains to your work, your livelihood, your money situation, there's a lot of money in housing situations right now. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Unless you can leverage yourself to get something better, don't do it. Okay? Because there will be a lot of people who have um, pretty much cut off their nose to spite their face, and they will quit, and they will think that somehow the universe owes them something. There's a real key difference between manifesting and feeling like you're owed something. Now, we all have a birthright. We all have a birthright to be safe and healthy and whole and well and be cared for, of course. Those are the basics. All of the gravy, all of the extras, all of the things that you want, you have to individualize that. In other words, you're customizing it. And how it happens is through your light body. Through your light body, that is how you do things. Okay? And it includes communing communing with your soul. If you don't know how to do that, we need to talk or you need to join one of my other classes or webinars to do this. You have to kiss it. Keep it simple and sweet. Okay? So this is not to tell you don't dream big, but it's also to say be practical. And I've said this to people and people say to me, well, what? I'm not supposed to have luxury? That's very subjective because it depends what luxury means for you. Does that mean a brand new down blanket for the winter? Does it mean going on an inclusive trip where someone else, all inclusive trip where someone else does the cooking, cleaning, cleaning the room, your laundry for you? And you're just shuttled from place to place like, you know, you should be, right? But you're paying for it. Maybe you could win it. Maybe your soul will know that you need to win something to give you that boost of confidence and energy. So I'm not saying don't dream big. Make it known what it is. Don't be vague about it. Don't just have a sense of entitlement where you're saying, well, you know, but I'm, ta-da, I'm a sovereign being. Yeah, but what came of sovereign being to your sovereign being in the next dimension? How do you want your life to be here? And you're seeing it all around you. There are people that love van life. They're loving it, okay? Doesn't matter if 100 years ago they were considered caravan gypsies. They're loving it right now. I've slept in cars as a child because my allergies were so bad. I won't say that I found it glamorous, but it wasn't so bad. But it's a whole different story for people who really love it. Some people do want a big house and a big family. And you have to have the right amount of money to make sure that all those gears turn properly. You're also coming together and um, folding yourselves back into your other half. And your other half also has their life that they're collapsing. And once the activation happens, you can't really deny it. You will go through some things on your own, but it's undeniable that, you know, you're sort of swimming towards a certain direction. So acceptance, acceptance. Okay. 
What are other things to quit? Other things to quit are drama and stress. Okay. Now, if you notice you're being stressed, I'm going to send you something. I'm going to send you a breath exercise for you to practice. Stress can limit your organs. And it doesn't really kill your organs. It kind of constricts them. They don't function at 100% level. Stress um, throws you into hormonal imbalance. And stress can come off to the people around you. They pick up the vibe and... You know, just like you can pick up their vibe if they're stressed. How do we all not take this personally? It's through deflecting it with your twin flame body, with your the complex of your subtle body parts. That takes time, okay? And you will feel detached and you'll literally feel like some people are from another planet. That happens. The next thing, quit drama. Okay, and that means quit other people's drama too. Okay, if you are, you know, somehow observing things that are happening in the news media, on a show, um, if you have a soap opera, if it's in your own life, definitely stop and let that be your mantra. Please take me out of the drama. It's that simple. Take me out of the drama. And then you have to do your part by not giving into the drama, not engaging it again, not listening, not, you have to do something different and redirect. Drama is a big addiction because when people start to clear things away, they begin to feel initially maybe a little bored with earth and they want to stir things up, be a little provocative, make something happen. It's the wrong way to do it. You get guided from your heart. And what you are creating. What we're not creating is more drama. Yes, there are people who will still do drama. There are people who are constantly in a state of crisis. And they're going to pull everyone down with them. We see it all the time. You can see it in the news that there are people that go join other people's drama. It gets them in trouble. Stay away from the trouble. Stay away from the drama. You don't need it. Your body genuinely needs a break away from all that stuff. So what does that take? It means don't look for it. Don't watch it. Don't seek it. Don't engage it. Okay? Turn off the media. Turn off the news sources. Turn off the radio where you might hear it. Literally put yourself in a bubble because that is your love bubble. Get off the phone with people who call with their drama and stay off the social media where everyone is like emotionally dumping in forums and comments and, you know, they're not properly addressing their own stuff. Yeah, they're looking for sympathy. Yeah, you might, you know, get a little boost out of being the shoulder to cry on. Don't go there because it's not just your shoulder. It's your shoulder and the shoulder of your other half, okay? Now, if you're helping someone genuinely to step out of their drama with some genuine help, but they are doing the work, that's a different story. Like if it's your kid, if it's your child, a teenager, an adult teenager, you know, like when they're still young, but they're, they're still learning. If it's people around you, if it's boy trouble, if it's girl trouble, if it's a divorce situation, people around you are going to be having their lives changing because that is the nature of this energy. It is to change because if nothing changes, then nothing changes. You have an opportunity for self-transformation. Okay? So we're accepting this. We're accepting that there's been a huge sea change. We've all been underwater exposed to the elements and you know the pandemic was a big reminder of this and it should be an opportunity to see what it is that you really value you know do you value friendships do you value genuine family time not just the obligations do you value having some real life goals that are attainable and that your soul is ready to help you with 
Do you value this as an opportunity where we're starting to see each other as individual people and our gifts and our, our, you know, like our strong points? Are we starting to shine to each other again? Or are we just still seeing each other in a 3D way and, you know, going with stereotypes? No. No. That stuff's being ripped off of the heart, the hatreds, the eyes, and it happens through the light body. The big giant thing that has happened has been here, okay? Deep inside where all that stuff has been so embedded in. Out. Get it out. Everybody out. So, thanks so much for watching. Please uh, make sure that you are aware of addressing some of these things. Thank you and have a good month. Have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good holiday. Bye.